Now, whether you like it or not, you're going to get a rundown of the meaning of this drawing. George Bush, the people surrounding George Bush, George Bush's policies, and possibly George Bush's legacy. You might surmise from that that I don't care for George Bush. George Bush's people, George Bush's policies are George Bush's legacy. Input and output. It's set up like a plumbing facility or a sewer treatment plant. The title of this drawing is the moving finger writes and having read. Now that's a line from a poem by the Arabic 13th century poet Omar Khayyam from the Rubaiyat. And it states that the moving finger writes and having read moves on nor all your piety nor wit will lure it back a cancel half a line nor all your tears wash out a word of it. Obviously in relation to George Bush it means what he's done he's going to be accountable for. What we have here is the input section of the drawing. You have Pat Roberts, Hillary Clinton, the K Street lobbyists from Washington, D.C., the House, the Senate, the Republican National Committee, the Democratic National Committee, the President of the United States, the Vice President of the United States, and last but not least, Karl Rove. The title of this section of the machine is the Bullshit Input. Each of these little hoppers is connected to this main manifold by a small pipe. All of this input information, input bullshit, is mixed together and controlled by various aspects of this control mechanism and is fed out through these yellow pipes to the mixing chamber. This other pipe that comes from down here and up is the overflow because certainly in the Bush administration there is an overflow of bullshit. The ambient probe takes care to make sure that there isn't an overheating of, of the rhetoric so that things might blow up. This is sample one, sample two, and sample three. When it gets to the mixing chamber, it is mixed all together because uh, it really doesn't matter where it comes from. It's basically all the same nonsense. Besides where I've signed off on who drew this thing, an overflow valve, just in case it does get too much, it flows out of here and down and away from the drawing. The output of the mixing chamber flows up this small yellow pipe into the Stirling engine. Now the Stirling engine is one of those engines that's been around for years and years that promises to have perpetual motion without almost any input at all of external fuel. It's based on the air temperature difference between the ambient outside air temperature and the air temperature that's fed into these chambers, like combustion chambers. The ambient temperature is quite normal, uh, about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature of the bullshit coming out of our friends over here can be anywhere from 120 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, depending upon how important the thing is they think they're talking about. When the Stirling engine sees the difference between the temperature of the bullshit and the temperature of the outside air, it begins operating just like a regular internal combustion engine. It rotates, the crankshaft rotates. It does two things. It turns a motor generator unit that, that generates all the electricity needed for the uh, rest of the operation of the machine. You'll notice there's a, or a line here that uh, divides the lower portion to the upper portion because the functions are different. Down through this shaft is a series of helio cut gears with some idlers to change direction of the gears. And then up through here is the gear shaft. It goes up through here through the tachometer drive and then the tachometer reads here to tell you how fast the engine's running to make sure it doesn't over rev. A spur gear, sort of like the transaxle of your car. It in turn turns another rotary gear which turns this belt. The belt turns the large wheel and then it turns the smaller wheel and the slightly larger wheel and the slightly larger wheel and then the wheel of the same size. These are the bullshit pumps. The bullshit control unit is right here. It's connected to the pump sections themselves. And all of this is remote controlled by radio. It's not direct wired. Here's the control panel. Here's the antenna. Here's the receiving antenna for this unit. It transmits both operating and return telemetry back to the master control panel. These other uh, pipes that are colored gray that are coming out of this side of the Stirling engine, one of them is the excess bullshit feedback valve. And when this valve opens, it feeds the excess bullshit that's flowing through the system back down, enters into the mixing chamber again so that it can be fed back through. Hopefully this time actually used rather than rejected. The remainder of it, is sensed by the bullshit velocity meter to make sure it's the right speed to be fed up 
to the pump chamber. It comes up, it turns these pumps, and the pumps move up and down, 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 up and down. And, they, and this, those tremendous pressure coming out of this pump area is the feed. See, these are the pumps right here, one, two, three, four, five, and they're fed by these little spring devices. Coming out of, out of there, going through each of these little pumps, right here there's the flow line right there to this tiny little line to maintain high pressure is the bullshit it flows up when it gets here it goes through a series of reverse filter units it's called the truth filter one truth filter two and truth filter three it goes up down up down up down over into this into this unit which is marked bullshit intensifier this filters any chance that there's any truth in here and this is an ionization generation chamber this ionizes bullshit as it's fed in into um, this area here through this pipe right there this up here is the master power control unit that gets its power from down here. You'll notice these are color-coded. The ionization probe that's in, inside of the writing machine. This is the writing machine. The uh, bullshit again is ionized. Half of the alphabet and the numbers are ionized positive, And half of the, of the alphabet and the numbers are ionized negative. Therefore, you have a differentiation between these, so it makes it easier for the writing machine to write. Up here, you have the ink chamber that runs down in here and runs into a manual, a manual fountain pen that's controlled by these operating arms that come off of this unit here that's fed power from the motor generator unit that comes over here like this and down. Now, because the White House and the people involved in the operation of the American democratic political machine don't want even the io even a thought that what comes out of the white house might not be 100 percent truthful they have chosen to use a fountain pen so that it looks like a real human being has written these documents at this point you have a fountain pen fully loaded with ink you have a paper supply unit that drops a sheet of paper down the sheet of paper is marked the white house whatever kind of nonsense goes in here that's all mixed together through all of this is written on this sheet of paper where it says the white house written on this sheet of paper and is signed off by whoever is the flunky of the day then the paper is removed from the machine and sent out to the necessary bureaus